Our third keynote speaker is Dr. Tan Wa Piao. Dr. Tan is the section head of the Diploma in Psychology Studies, School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Temasek Polytechnic. He received Temasek Polytechnic's Teaching Excellence Award in 2012 in recognition of his contributions to teaching. Dr. Tan obtained a Bachelor of Social Sciences, Social Science and a Master's in Social Science from the National University of Singapore. and a PhD in Psychology from Iowa State University. A cognitive psychologist by training, Dr. Tan's research interest is in applying theories of cognitive psychology in areas such as education and human factors. Since 2010, Dr. Tan has collaborated with other local researchers, most notably from DAS and ASTAR, on numerous research studies, which were presented and published in international conferences and peer-reviewed journals. It is increasingly important for educators to implement relevant interven intervention programs to train individuals with dyslexia the necessary metacognitive skills in order for them to proficiently perform reading comprehension. Hence, given the topic of discussion being an investigation on the teaching practice of reading comprehension skills <coughs> for individuals with dyslexia in Singapore, Dr. Tan's presentation draws on research literature on intervention programs of reading comprehension skills to individuals with dyslexia, as well as to highlight the findings of a collaborative project between DAS and the Tomasic Polytechnic. Dr. Tan, please. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Hope you have a very good lunch. Okay, so my name is uh, Hua Piao. Okay, uh, today I'm going to present uh, a collaborative project right between um, Thermasic, uh, the Center for Applied Psychology in Thermasic Polytechnic uh, with uh, Dyslexia Association of Singapore. And as uh, mentioned by the by um, the announcers who introduced me just now, okay, this is an investigation on the teaching practice of um, of reading comprehension skills for individuals with dyslexia in Singapore. Now, before I continue, I would just like to acknowledge, okay, uh, my collaborators um, uh, from DAS, uh, Ms. Lois Lim, Ms. Serena Tan Abdullah, and uh, the DAS curriculum team, okay, for their help in this um, research, okay, and also students from Thermasic Polytechnic um, who, who, who also work on this project as well. Okay, so this is the outline of the presentation, okay. So, as we know, okay, reading comprehension is a process of uh, where we simultaneously extract and construct meaningful interaction and involvement uh, with written language. Okay? It's an essential skill that's not only useful for academic purposes, but also uh, useful for any individual right, okay, um, um, to cope well with uh, in everyday life. Okay? Um, we know okay, that individuals with dyslexia have difficulties with processing speech sounds. Uh, which affects words, word recognition. And this difficulty in word recognition right, okay, might become a bottleneck that impedes uh, reading comprehension. Um, and we know from past research right, that dyslexia is associated with poor reading comprehension skills. Okay? Now, of course, uh, the diagnosis of uh, dyslexia do not always equate to poor uh, reading comprehension. And individuals with dyslexia can adopt compensatory uh, measures to help them in uh, reading comprehension, okay, to, to kind of like improve their reading comprehension despite the fact that they may be like dyslexic. Okay, so it is actually important, right, okay, for relevant intervention programs, right, uh, to be rolled out, okay, to individuals with dyslexia so that they can be trained in the necessary metacognitive skills that's associated, okay, with uh, reading comprehension proficiency. Okay, so, in uh, September 2016, okay, the Dyslexia Association of Singapore enhanced their existing reading comprehension curriculum okay, as part of this um, integrated curriculum that focuses on key building blocks of literacy. Okay? The previous reading comprehension curriculum uh, focused on skills that derived from the Bloom's taxonomy, okay, whereas this um, um, new enhanced curriculum emphasized on closely aligning the essential skills track to mainstream curriculum in Singapore. Okay, and this is a quick comparison okay, between 
the uh, previous reading comprehension okay, uh, uh, curriculum and the enhanced reading comprehension curriculum. Okay, now the enhanced right, uh, reading comprehension curriculum is tailored to suit the learning needs of students uh, with different abilities. Now, uh, the teaching resources that have been developed as part of this entire uh, um, uh, enhancement of the curriculum, right, okay, uh, emphasize okay, on the use of relevant and localized content with appropriate <coughs> principles. And last but not least, okay, this enables the learners okay, to apply uh, the learned uh, reading comprehension skills to a wide diversity of context and situation. Okay, so, um, when we have um, um, any sort of like you know enhancement in curriculum, we introduce we introduce any sort of like new curriculum. Uh, it is always always very important, right? Okay, to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, enhance any enhance not just reading comprehension but any curriculum. And I do think that this is something that is not done uh, um, widely enough in the field. Okay, and so okay with uh, as I mentioned in last year. Okay, when DAS launched this enhanced uh, reading comprehension curriculum, um, we saw that there was a good opportunity right, for us, uh, to, for Tomasic Polytechnic, okay, to come in to collaborate with uh, DAS okay, to design the evaluation study okay, for this uh, reading comprehension curriculum. Okay. Um, I will not, okay, I, for reasons that, that will be reviewed later, I will not be going through the entire you know, uh, uh, um, evaluation, but just a very small part of, 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 of uh, the evaluation uh, that, that was designed. Okay? Uh, there are actually two main areas of evaluation. Okay? One uh, is on the student performance, and two is on the educational therapies views and practices. Okay, so, uh, for the first part, right, okay, uh, take note here, I'm not going to talk about this in this presentation. But uh, with any kind of like you no know, curriculum uh, evaluation, you the first thing that you always ask right, okay, is uh, okay, uh, are the students benefiting from this? Okay, is this uh, improving the students' comprehension skills? And for this right, okay, uh, as you can see on the on the slides, okay, uh, we have uh, some sort of, some measures of uh, students' reading comprehension proficiency in two thousand fifteen from archival data. Um, in 2016, prior to the introduction of this uh, enhanced uh, reading comprehension curriculum, right? Okay, uh, students' reading comprehension proficiency was was measured again, and uh, we plan to measure uh, their reading comprehension proficiency in 2017, later this year. Okay, um, um, uh, to assess uh, whether the enhanced uh, reading comprehension curriculum was uh, effective. So this I will not present in the uh, uh, in the in the talk today. Uh, probably in the future, someone will come here and present this uh. Okay. Now uh, this is what I am going to present. Okay. Um, other than evaluating uh, 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 students' performance, right? Okay. The other thing that we looked at was uh, we did a survey. Okay. Uh, at different time points. Okay. On the views and practices of the educational, uh, educational therapies right, on reading comprehension skills. Okay? And the first survey okay, was, uh, was administered in September 2016 okay, before the implementation of this uh, reading, enhanced reading comprehension curriculum. Okay? So this was before. Okay? And um, we recently followed up okay, uh, with uh, another survey okay, midway into this uh, uh, enhanced curriculum okay, and, and uh, there will be a, uh, another survey that's being sent out right uh, that will be sent out in October 2017 okay? uh, and obviously okay, uh, I'm just going to present the data or findings right from the first survey okay, and not uh, the second uh, you know, mainly because I don't have a time machine so I can't like, you know, yeah Okay, so um, this is what I'll be focusing on in this today's talk. Okay, um, so let's talk a bit about the methodology. Okay, um, we surveyed 110 educational therapies from uh, DAS. Okay, the age range was from 23 years old to 60 years old, and the mean time of in service was uh, 3.74 years. 
okay, um, we have like very rookie kind of like uh, additional therapies, right, who join for less than one month. We also survey people who has been in, you know, uh, with BAS for up to 12 years, okay, more than 10 years, okay, and this is a breakdown of, uh, this is a breakdown of their ed educational qualification, okay, now, for the survey itself, right, it's uh, mainly broken down into three parts, okay, um, the first part, right, okay, uh, is actually a survey on the educational therapies, right, views and practice of, uh, their reading of the reading comprehension skills that's taught in the classroom, okay, uh, we've, and they're asked to rate, okay, uh, how frequent do they teach a particular skill, okay, how important do they think a particular uh, skill is, okay, and the level of difficulty in teaching that particular skill. Okay, uh, there's also uh, some open-ended questions for, for the educational therapy right, to list down other types of uh, reading comprehension skills okay, that they teach in class but we may not have necessarily like, you know, asked in the survey. Okay? Uh, we also have uh, ratings and open-ended questions right, on some factors. Right? Uh, we wanted to find out what's, what, what are some factors that influence their decisions right, to decide which reading comprehension skills right, to teach the students. Okay, so that's part one, it's mainly on the skills, the reading comprehension skill sets. Okay, now part two of the survey, okay, uh, is actually on the resources that they use right, okay, to teach uh, the reading, reading comprehension skills. Okay, again, uh, we, we, we uh, did our environmental scan, we have a list of uh, of a, we have a list of uh, equipment and list of uh, reading comprehension content right that we know the educational therapists are using in their uh, everyday like interaction with the students and we ask like you know um, uh, the the education therapists to rate how often do they use uh, such resources okay we also have uh, uh, ratings and open open ended questions right on the factors that influence their decisions on which of these uh, resources. Uh, to use, okay, and there were some open-ended questions on teaching resources, uh, asking them about you know, what they think about the, uh, whether they think uh, the current teaching resources needs to be changed, uh, is there any re resources that they need but it's not uh, available for them, okay, is there any irrelevant resources that's being used, and you know, how do they source for these resources, okay, and last but not least, part three is just the demographics. You know, of the um, education therapies. Okay, so uh, I mentioned the reading comprehension skills just now, right, in the part one. So these are actually the skills, right, okay, uh, that, that, that we surveyed, okay. Uh, and as you can see, it's broken down into basic, intermediate, and advanced skills uh, related to reading comprehension. Now, um, just a point of note, right, okay, these reading comprehension skills, right, okay, uh, were the skills that, that kind of like that were uh, incorporated into the enhanced curriculum at the point of time when we started this research. I can tell you now that uh, there has been since right okay, uh, some other new reading comprehension skills that's been added to this list. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that during the discussion session. Okay, but uh, the idea is when we started this research right uh, last year, okay, these were the skill sets that were uh, reading comprehension skill sets that were being measured. Okay, um, the survey right okay was created and pilot tested by Temasek Polytechnic uh, Diploma in Psychology Studies students uh, with feedback from the DS curriculum and admissions team. Okay, uh, it was administered via Google Forms. Okay, prior to the introduction of the enhanced curriculum, and I need to stress this um, quite um, uh, strongly is when. When the uh, education therapists receive this survey, right, they haven't actually gone through the training, right, okay, for the enhanced curriculum yet. Uh, in fact, I think most of them uh, do not really know what's what's in the enhanced curriculum. So they they were doing this, right, okay, before they had any knowledge of the new enhanced, sorry, of the enhanced curriculum. Okay, and the education therapists right, were sent uh, an email with the e-survey link, and they completed the survey at their own uh, convenience. Okay, so this is uh, results and findings. Uh, I'll talk about the results and findings. I'll split it up in two parts, okay? Uh, the first part, I'll talk about the reading comprehension skills, okay? And the second part, right, I'll talk about the resources. 
Okay, so uh, the practice and views of the taught reading comprehension skills in the classroom. Okay, so as you can see, okay, the first thing that we wanted to look at right, was, okay, remember this was done, this survey was set up before okay, the introduction or the implementation of the enhanced reading comprehension curriculum with those skill sets that you see just now. So the first thing was, we asked like, hey, uh, for the education therapy, are you guys even teaching these skill sets right now, even before this enhanced curriculum was being uh, uh, implemented? And, well, good news, as you can see, for the basic reading comprehension skills, right, um, you can see most, if not all of them, uh, there's a very high level of like, you know, teaching already, uh, education therapists are teaching these skills in the classroom already. Okay, without even like you know having this enhanced curriculum rolled out, okay, and that trend also carried forward for the intimate, uh, intermediate reading comprehension skills, okay, uh, is with the advanced reading comprehension skills right that you see, you suddenly see uh, something like a dip right uh, in terms of uh, the the teaching of these skills. So it seems that for the advanced skills right, well it's. It's still quite high, still all above eighty percent. But if you think about like um, the sample size that we had, which was one hundred and ten, right? There were probably like you know, 15, 16, 17 uh, at piece, okay, uh, who were not teaching this advanced reading comprehension skill sets. And of course, we want to find out uh, why is this the case, okay? So remember, just now, uh, in this part, part one of the survey where we we asked about the reading comprehension skills, right? Okay, we also surveyed. Uh, two questions, okay? Uh, we surveyed, we asked them to rate three things, if you remember. And this, right, okay, is uh, the ratings of the frequency of the reading comprehension skill sets that they taught in each category. And as you can see, uh, it basically, you know, it's, it's consistent with this, where uh, for the uh, basic and intermediate uh, uh, reading comprehension skills, they tend to teach more frequently in the classroom, okay? Whereas for the advanced, is taught uh, advanced reading comprehension skills right, is taught less frequently. Okay, so come back to this. Um, if you recall uh, just now when I presented the what we measured in the survey, right? We measured we asked the education therapist to rate three things. First, how often do you teach this particular reading comprehension skill? Second, how important do you think this reading comprehension skill is? And thirdly, okay, uh, how difficult it, do you think right, is right, okay, to teach this particular reading comprehension skill? Okay? And what you can see here is for the basic reading comprehension skills. Okay? Also, we uh, ran a correlation analysis. Okay? And those that's highlighted in blue are significant, okay? i.e. they are statistically significant. And what you can see is for the basic reading comprehension skills, right, okay, uh, the Significant correlation right, is where is, is in the area of uh, importance and frequency, meaning the more important they thought a reading comprehension skill was, okay, the more often is they, they, they taught the skill. Okay, and there was no um, statistically significant correlation with how difficult they thought the skill was, was uh, it was to teach the skill. When we come to the intermediate skill sets, right, you can see it's kind of like a mix of both, okay? You still have a few skill set where it correlates uh, significantly with um, uh, how important do they think the skill set is, okay? Uh, with the, and, and the frequency of, of how often they teach the skill set in the classroom. But you also see some um, negative significant negative correlation, right, okay? With how frequent they teach in the classroom and how difficult they think the skill uh, is to teach, okay? And what this means here is that the more they think uh, a skill, a reading comprehension skill is more difficult to teach, right? The less this particular reading comprehension skill is taught in the classroom. And when we go to the advanced, you can see that it's almost like on the right side of the column, the negative correlation is, is that's, that's more significant correlation, uh, negative correlation there. And for the advanced skill, it seems that for most of the skill sets here, right, the more difficult they think the skill set is to teach, right, okay, the less likely they are going to teach it in the classroom. Okay, so let's hold that thought, okay, because this is something that when we explore the, um, what educational therapists want for uh, some of these resources that they, they, they have, right, in the classroom, right, uh, 
uh, you will see that it actually triangulates and it, it, it forms a coherent story. So let's just hold that, hold that thought in mind. Okay, we also ask education therapy, right? Other than the list of skill sets that we give you, okay, what other skill set that you use, right? Teach reading really comprehension, okay, skills, okay, that is not listed in this. And as you can see, these are the skills that they have uh, listed. Visualization, you know, verbalization, and you can see that there is a very strong, um, I think if you kind of look at the, what is their qualitative like no report here, right? Uh, there's this uh, very strong um, uh, emphasis of using visual skills to help in uh, uh, understanding reading uh, in, in reading comprehension. And this other idea where they try to get the uh, student right to associate the what they already know right okay with uh, the the passage that they are currently reading. Okay. And what factors then influence the decision to teach which um, um, uh, reading comprehension skill? Uh, as you can see, okay, um, the if you look at all the you know the, the ratings here, right, the factors that seem to uh, to to influence uh, the decision to teach reading comprehension skills most right are those that have to do with like you know how they interact with the student. Okay, the students' needs, okay, and whether the skill was important or not. And last but not least, also, okay, how comfortable they are in teaching the skill. Okay, and this is uh, consistent with the some of the data that I presented just now as well. Okay, and uh, these are some other um, factors that that they wrote, wrote uh, the education therapist wrote down to say that these are some other factors that influence them. And as you can see, okay, uh, level of expertise, how confident they are to teach the skill, okay, the reading comprehension skills, whether the resources is available or not, okay. So a lot of times, as they mentioned here, right, okay, um, and, and um, whether they choose to teach a particular reading comprehension skill set, right, is whether there is uh, any existing uh, pedagogy uh, resource, right, available for, for the education therapy, right, to help teach that particular skill set, okay. And, Lastly, you can see that there's a student interest, lah. Okay, okay. So let's move on very quickly, right? Okay, to the resources that's been used to teach these reading really comprehension skills. Okay, as you can see, okay. So these are the content. Okay, as you can see, uh, a lot of these the um, the education therapists are using reading really comprehension book, assessment books, story books, uh, newspaper articles. You know. Uh, to help you know, teach students okay, reading comprehension skills. When we come to the equipment that they use, right, uh, as you can see, I think it mirrors with uh, one of the pre-workshop conference on like, you know, education technology uh, in teaching dyslexia, uh, individuals with dyslexia, right, okay, uh, is that more often than not, you find that uh, in terms of the teaching, right, it's still quite, the equipment that's being used right, is still quite low-tech. And as you can see, um, some of the high-tech gadgets like smart bars and you know, uh, projectors, even tablets, right, is really, really rarely used at all. Not, not frequently used. Okay? It's really not frequently used by the education therapists. Okay? And um, although surprisingly, okay, uh, some of them say that they also use games okay, to teach uh, reading comprehension. And, when we look at this online resource, right, okay, it's mainly they are using this online resource to search for the content, okay, and not so much like use them as the equipment, okay, and these are the factors that influence uh, 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 education therapy, right, okay, uh, into deciding which are the which content or which equipment they will use, okay, and I would just point out to you that you know. Um, they mentioned that you know, it has to be like local context. Okay, one of the um, quite highly rated ones again student needs. So we can be quite confident, confident that you know, the education therapists when they are teaching this reading comprehension skills, right? The thing that's really on their mind, right? Okay, is um, the students' needs. Okay, um, yeah. But as you can see here, okay, ease of usage is also a very important factor. Okay, for for the education therapist to decide which okay, reading comprehension uh, resource to use. Okay? And uh, these are some other factors that they say you know, influence their use of the different types of reading uh, comprehension, comprehension resources. 
Okay. So uh, we have some uh, question. Okay, ask. Do you think the current reading comprehension resources in that's provided by DES is it relevant? Okay, and the good news is the majority of the education therapists thinks that it's very relevant. Uh, however, okay, they also think that uh, the reading comprehension resources right needs to be changed. And again, I mean, this may uh, well like you know, but again, I. I emphasize that this was done before the enhanced curriculum and in fact some of the changes in the enhanced curriculum right actually like you know, uh, they asked for more localized content uh, they asked for more like you know uh, reading comprehension resources that's catered to the needs of the students and the abilities of the of the different bandings of the students abilities and that's actually addressed in the new uh, uh, and uh, sorry in the enhanced curriculum okay and uh, this is interesting, okay? Uh, so we when we ask them like what kind of like uh, additional resources that's needed, right? Okay, yeah, these are what and I draw your attention, right? Okay, I draw your attention to the second bar on that, which is educator resources. So a lot of these education therapists they are saying that hey, we need some sort of like education resources, right? Okay, to help us with uh, with teaching these reading comprehension skills. And if you think about the ratings that they had for, uh, you know, the, their ratings for the difficulty of uh, teaching that and the frequency in which they teach a particular skill set, this makes sense. So this does say that at least, okay, the current practice with, uh, within, or at least from the education therapist perspective, right, is that they probably feel that some sort of like um, pedagogical support is needed, right, for them to teach the more advanced reading comprehension uh, skills to the students, okay? And, okay, so this is the last slide that I have, I think, yeah, uh, for, for the data. So, uh, most of them do source outside of uh, what is given to them, okay, which is really good, okay? And a lot of them source from online resources and uh, off-the-shelf resources, um, some from examination paper and some from newspapers. Okay, so, um, just very quickly run through the discussion and conclusion. So the main findings, right, okay, from of this survey, right, is that the education therapists are already teaching most of the reading comprehension skills, right, in the enhanced curriculum. So that's that's good news, okay. And the basic and intermediate reading comprehension skills are actually taught more frequently than the advanced reading comprehension skills. And for the basic reading comprehension skills, right, the teaching frequency is more likely to correlate with the importance of the skill sets. But for the more advanced skills, right, okay, teaching frequency is more likely to correlate with the difficulty of like teaching that particular reading compression skill. Okay, and for the main findings for the resource, right, is that uh, most education therapists in DAS agree that you know, uh, the reading compression reading compression resources that's currently used are relevant, but probably require some changes. Okay, and this is kind of like interesting. Uh, they search for the content, right, okay, for teaching, you know, reading comprehension skills from online, but when they present it to the students, right, they prefer very low-tech technology worksheets, okay, and um, some education therapists feel the need, right, for more localized content uh, and alignment to the mainstream curriculum, which is something that's addressed in the enhanced curriculum, and last but not least, right, okay, uh, the student interest is a, actually a recurring theme, right? Okay, uh, that's that that keeps popping up. Like when we ask, like, what are some of the factors that 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 uh, affects your decision, right, to teach certain skill set or to use certain uh, equipment or resources, right? Student interest is actually a recurring thing that keeps popping up in both you know parts of the survey. Okay, now. Um, as I mentioned at the start of this presentation, right, okay, uh, curriculum development, okay, is an ongoing process that should be informed by both theory and empirical data, okay. Um, it is good to have a theoretical framework because the theoretical framework actually guides, okay, the purposeful development of the curriculum and resources to support the delivery of the curriculum, okay. Uh, but more often than not, uh, as I mentioned just now, okay, is that is that we rely, I think, okay, to a certain extent, too much on like just theoretical framework, and there isn't a lot of like uh, bottom up 
uh, empirical evaluation right, of the effectiveness of these curriculums or effectiveness of certain teaching methods or even effective, effectiveness of uh, uh, certain teaching resources right okay and this this not necessary this is not only you know, for DAS but it extends to uh, a lot of, like, of mainstream educational practices as well okay so um, what we are trying to do here with this simple survey and also with uh, the student uh, the evaluation of the students' learning, right, which will be reported uh, at a later conference or presentation, okay, is that we are trying to um, validate, okay, different aspects of uh, curriculum design and del delivery, okay, and it can actually be used as a, another useful source of information for revision and enhancement of curriculum. I think more often than not, right, okay, we have this fear of saying that Oh, I introduced this curriculum, okay, and then I did the eval evaluation. I found that it didn't work. Oh no, then I should have done this evaluation in the first place because this then, this then like you know negates or this then like you know, uh, uh, um, uh, says that you know I'm wasting I've wasted my time in developing like this particular curriculum. But I think that's not the correct mindset to have when we come to <coughs> curriculum development. Um, I myself, okay, as a, as an educator, okay, as an educator, okay, uh, uh, it's also involved in curriculum development when I teach my students, and I think right, okay, we need to move away from this mindset of like, okay, we shouldn't evaluate the, the implementation, we shouldn't evaluate the program, we shouldn't evaluate the, the curriculum just in case we find that it's ineffective and all our efforts have been wasted, because. Uh, Something that I always tell my students when they are running research studies right, is that hey, sometimes the now effect, i.e. when you don't find an effect, that is actually as important as finding an effect. Because think about it, if you don't run this uh, evaluation studies right, and you just allow uh, this curriculum, hey, let's just, now we have all this framework, it's guided by this framework. Yeah, the framework could have been developed in another context or another environment that's not suitable for Singapore and you just implant them here and you run them here and it turns out that it's not effective but you don't know it's not effective because uh, it's not you're not tracking the you know you're not evaluating it and a lot of time right okay uh, uh, you are wasting resources this way because once you know that oh this is not effective okay stop I'm gonna stop this and let's move on to something that may be more useful or something that may be more effective okay so um, I have actually shared this um, uh, findings right with the DS curriculum team who is in charge of developing the enhanced uh, curriculum and I know for a fact that even at, as, as uh, I'm speaking now they are still continuing refining the curriculum and based on what I shared with them we actually decided that these are some of the things that uh, some of the points right, that can be considered right in the future uh, revisions of the reading comprehension curriculum. First, okay, first, the main thing that came out is we need to provide the education therapist right, with more educated resources, okay, especially for the teaching of the advanced uh, reading comprehension skill set. So this seems to be a current uh, gap okay, right, right now, okay. And, <laughs> and I think I'm not probably not the first person to say this, uh, is uh, there has to be, like, even though yes, people may be afraid, afraid of new technology, but there has to be you know, uh, some um, exploration of some using more digital platforms to assist in the teaching of reading comprehension skills. Because whether we like it or not, right, this is the general trend that's going to happen in, in education. Okay? Um, we also like, encourage right, like the curriculum, and I'm sure they, they do that as well, okay, to engage the educational therapists on the, uh, 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 the reading comprehension skills that they teach, okay, uh, all the resources that they use, that's not within the cur current curriculum, uh, that's not within the current enhanced curriculum, okay, and explore incorporating these, uh, these you know, practices that, you know, uh, 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 education therapists may already have right, okay, uh, to future into future iteration of the curriculum because some of these as, as you see just now some of these education therapists they are actually very 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 experienced more than 10 years of experience teaching I'm pretty sure maybe you know, maybe they themselves did not do a 
systematic evaluation, but they probably like you know, through trial and error came out with something like this that, that could be useful to be shared with the other colleagues. So I think this is something that, that the curriculum team can consider as well. And last but not least, one of the recurring themes in both uh, parts of the survey is student interest. So uh, this is something that probably uh, in future uh, revisions of the enhanced curriculum, okay, uh, this is something that can be like you no know, uh, thought about as well. Okay, uh, so uh, I think it's, uh, how much time do I still have left? One minute, okay. Just last slide, okay. Um, as I mentioned, this is just, I'm actually just presenting one very small part of the data, right, of this entire uh, evaluation project. The data from the later part of the study, right, okay, which will be collected later this year, okay, should provide a better assessment of the effectiveness of this enhanced curriculum, especially the, from the students' uh, learning performance. Okay, um, the responses from the education therapies for the second and third round of the survey, right, should also be useful for enhancing future iteration of this uh, reading comprehension uh, curriculum. And of course, right, okay, um, uh, one, 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 one possible like, you know, analysis to do, right, okay, is to explore the relationship between uh, the education therapies, uh, their survey on the response, and the improvement in the students' like you no know, uh, reading comprehension proficiency, and with that, okay, I end my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Great, and uh, thank you, Dr. Tan, for the insightful presentation on providing targeted and informed intervention programs. So let's um, welcome Mr. Lee Siang on stage to present Dr. Tan with a token of appreciation. Thank you, Dr. Tan, and thank you, Mr. Lee Siang.